Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's okay to hate the MCU. Now. Now. Now, yeah, it's totally fine to hate on phase four of the MCU because we have lots of news outlets that were standing for Marvel for years. And, uh, you know, they're telling YouTubers that they were, they were awful, fans. awful people, toxic fans, um, alt-right Nazis, the whole deal, right? Just in the last couple of days, the Daily Beast puts up an article. The Marvel Cinematic Universe's phase four has been a total train wreck. How dare they? That's hate speech. Four hours ago on Screen Rant, it's okay to say MCU movies are bad. Well, why weren't we allowed to say that? Yeah, the news outlets, you know, the ones that were calling fans toxic, you know, oh, they they, they tried to, to destroy Captain Marvel, all that kind of crap. You're allowed to say it's bad now. Now, so we're going to take a look at these articles. We're going to see a lot more like this, I think, because one, people have caught on that Phase 4 is a dud, and it's mm -hmm. completely directionless. No direction, yeah. Completely directionless. And two, a lot of these news outlets are trying to claw back as many fans as they can. And they've spent so many years attacking fans, driving their audience away. And I did a video yesterday how uh, gaming news sites mm -hmm. were freaking out because they're like, oh my God, our, our websites are dying. Well, the websites are dying because they didn't have a lot of actual readers. They had venture capital propping up these websites. And the actual readers were moving on to like YouTube and smaller websites. And I think they're starting to realize like, oh shit, we are on the wrong side of it. And yeah, after they told everybody else they were on the wrong side of it. After people. they told everybody else for years. I like this why Thor Love and Thunder CGI looks so bad. And that's one of their popular articles right now. Yeah, because uh, you know a lot of people working on these movies said that uh, Marvel's just you know shitting stuff out, rushing so it out. So we start. We gonna be allowed to call them misogynists, racist, istophobes, toxic man babies? I don't know. Incels. I, I just think this is uh, very very funny. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over two hundred and seventy-two thousand, almost two hundred seventy-three thousand subs. Thank you for the support. Uh, we do talk about Marvel. Talk about Disney. Uh, talk about the MCU Phase 4, which is uh, so far had more misfires than hits, in my opinion, and in the opinions of a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. It is a directionless mess, and they're actually bringing that up. The Daily Beast, in particular, brings it up. They're like, it's very clear that they had a plan for the MCU right. through Endgame. Yes. Before we go any further, we want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video. Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join. You can skip a month or cancel anytime. Every month, Bespoke introduces members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more, even live oysters. Live oysters? Every box has around $70 worth of goods inside, but it costs you only a fraction of the value. So let's see what kind of stuff I like. I know I like to chop and I like meat. I do not smoke. I do like to cook. I'm very interested in cooking and I do like to groom. And uh, sometimes I go outside of my house. So I would say I'm interested and I do travel quite a bit. So I'm interested and I love music. I'm interested. You can preview your box before it's shipped. You'll get a box assigned to you and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide whether or not you want it. Let's see, look at these tacos. Look at these tacos. Do I want tacos? Do I want to add the tacos to my cart? Sure, I like tacos. Who doesn't like tacos? Everybody likes tacos. You can keep it, swap it out for a different box or skip the month entirely for no charge and you only pay for what you want. Let's see what's in these boxes. This one is retreat. This is an on-the-go blanket. On-the-go blanket. And an on-the-go hammock. Oh, now we're talking. Japanese Hori Knife Ultimate Tool. Terra is built with features to do just about anything. This is like... This is like the multi-tool. I mean, I use every tool for everything anyway. Look at this. Base light grooming kit, detox scrub bar, gold moss, and activated charcoal. 
smell good while getting out outdoorsy. I mean, you can get all kinds of cool stuff like this sent to your mailbox every month. Again, a big thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter clown20 at checkout or go to Bespoke Post backslash clown20. And now there's no plan. Yes. And that, well, I told you in the other video, they were talking just like in May or something like that, that Kevin Feige and team were going to go on a retreat to plan the rest of the MCU. And I was like, but wait, I thought you already had a plan. No, no, they didn't. There's no plan. Now they're talking, they're teasing, uh, you know, secret wars with the Russo brothers. Yes. You know, again, it doesn't feel like they were actually building toward that organically. It's like, well, how do we one up uh, Infinity War? Ah, uh, secret wars. We'll do that one. We'll do that next. So this article from the Daily Beast a couple days ago, the Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 4 has been a total train wreck. No shit! Um, they what said there's no larger structure or any compelling supervillains. It's populated by second-tier heroes. You can't say that because that's racism. That's racism. And, and, and misogyny. Go ask Twitter. <laughs> They're talking about the cinema scores, and we talked about this the other day, the cinema score dropping on MCU mm -hmm. movies, the audiences are getting kind of burnt out on the MCU. And again... It's a double-edged sword because I think if people were really invested in the MCU, they wouldn't be getting burnt out. But instead, it's it's a bunch of uh, middling TV shows, middling movies, uh, a handful of characters you recognize. We had you know Wanda's uh, heel turn, which you know again that happened in the comics. She's you know goes between good and evil all the time. But I don't think the MCU fans were quite prepared. No, for but it. I have to I have to read this paragraph because it makes me so it amuses me so much. Since reaping billions with Endgame, Marvel has delivered exactly one memorable superhero spectacular, Spider-Man No Way Home. Yep. And that was a co-production with Sony that hinged on nostalgia for pre-MCU movies. What? No, wait, it gets better, it gets better. What? The rest have all been different shades of mid. Black Widow was an underdone by pointless blandness more than the pandemic. Shang-Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings was a formatic shrug. You know how much shit we got for saying it was in, it was it was it was okay though, and Eternals was a dreary dud that barely felt like it existed in the same world as the franchise as its franchise mates, and Doctor Strange too was a Frankensteinian monster whose few flourishes were drowned out by cacophonous faux horror and fan servicey cameos. Thor: Love and Thunder is a similar washout, an insistently jokey beast that can't get out of its own smug way. Ouch. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, my God. That's way more vicious than we've ever been. Almost all of these still turned out to be financial winners, but that says less about their quality than about the studio's success at convincing audiences that each new MCU installment is a must-see if they want to stay abreast of the ongoing serialized narrative. Except what narrative? <laughs> what narrative? Endgame capped a decade in which Marvel's standalone films built in intertwined fashion toward an epic finale. Phase 4 has yet to reveal a larger structure Except about, uh, it's about the multiverse, a concept that grows more tedious oh, with each passing day. This is so funny. Uh, given that it mainly registers as a device for resurrecting past favorites and indulging in do-overs. Uh, not even hinting an overarching direction or yes! goal. The entire affair feels like a rudderless collection of tonally divergent one-offs. Uh, kind of like the DCEU. Yeah, but it kind of reminds me too, like they're doing with Ms. Marvel. We're going to bring the X-Men in. So you know yeah. there's things people want. They're just trying to find a way to tie it into all their other shit instead of just giving people what they want. Yeah, I mean, if they actually gave us a good X-Men movie and a good Fantastic Four movie, uh, you know, I mean, at one point in time, the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, and Spider-Man carried Marvel Comics. Mm -hmm. Carried the whole damn thing. And it could carry the MCU because, you know, people forget Captain America and Iron Man and especially Ant-Man, those characters, they were D-list yes, characters. before. They were the leftovers. Well, they get down to that down here, I think, when they're talking about Robert Downey Jr. and stuff. Yeah, there's no Robert Downey Jr., no Chris Evans. Uh, Chadwick Boseman is gone. We're going to do another Black Panther without the Black mm -hmm. Panther, which makes no damn sense. Hemsworth's God of Thunder aside, it's all second tier now. And he's second tier. Mm -hmm. He's second tier in his own movie. You know, there's no super villain in sight, creatively speaking. Phase four has already hit the skids. Jonathan Major's uh, baddie Kang the Conqueror may eventually fit the bill, but the fact that he's only been briefly introduced in one of the MCU's small screen ventures in Loki speaks to another franchise problem. Uh, too much material. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. There's too much. 
it's too much. WandaVision and Hawkeye and Loki, and you have to watch all these to understand what the hell is going on. I mean, originally it was supposed to be that these were going to be like additive. These shows were going to be additive. But it's like if you didn't watch WandaVision, you don't know what the hell is going on in, in Doctor Strange 2. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what's well, going on. Well, they bring that down here. They said the MCU's paradigm shifting achievement was interconnectivity, which is why Phase 4's the, the diffuseness is such a letdown. Well, the franchise has exhibited a great willingness to hire distinct directors, lend their films, blah, 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 blah. They resulted in mostly uneven and unsatisfying. That's interesting. Um, and they're talking about She-Hulk up above, which no one really gives, a shit, gives about. a shit about. Basically, everybody's like, it looks like shit, and it doesn't look like She-Hulk at all. The character doesn't even act like She-Hulk. That's it. I'm hearing from everyone. Yeah, they basically said that what is driving the box office is obligation. People yes. are in the habit of going to see every Marvel movie. Because they think it's actually leading to something. But it's starting to not be the case, and the box office is starting to drop. Yep. A course correction is needed before the entire ship runs aground. Thank you. That's what we've been saying. You know how much shit we take for saying that kind of stuff? We've been saying it for years. Years. And we get so much shit for it. So now we've got um, Screen Rant. It's now okay to say MCU movies are bad. Been saying it. Uh, MCU Phase 4's mixed reception has continually had people lash out against any criticism. Yes! But there are plenty of reasons why it should be allowed. But they're going to be like, probably their reasons. Uh, they said they were releasing many more projects that have been met with mixed or negative reception from the previous phases. Oddly enough, this has caused some people to become more defensive of the MCU. We, I, I see it in the comments. <laughs> we did a video the other day on um, uh, Kamala Khan being a mutant. And we had some rando, a couple rando, like, MCU, small YouTube channels, like, popping in, being like, you're so negative. Why are you so negative? Yeah, and here's the thing. Now, I'm so glad that Screen Rant gives me permission to say what I've been saying all this time. Yeah, right? Um, bad CGI, lackluster storytelling. Amen. Um, many have gotten into the habit of saying the criticisms are overblown at best and entirely out of line at worst. But they're not. That's just it. Yep. Both will usually lead to heavy vitriol levy to anyone who had any sort of criticism. The media was the ones doing it first. And yes. now they're pissed. Now it's okay to hate it. The media set the tone. The and now, now the they're like, shit. Now everybody's mad at us because we don't like it. I mean, now we've got people working on Marvel projects coming out and saying that Disney's cutting corners. Uh, Disney's cutting corners. They're overworking their CGI, uh, you know, visual effects artists. They're making, you know, last minute changes. They're trying to shit out too much stuff. They're going yes. to quantity over quality. Let's be honest. They said, um, while the MCU is far from the only fandom to have this sort of behavior, toxic behavior, <laughs> it's certainly become one of the more noticeable to engage in recent years. If Star Wars too, I would say. In Star Wars. It's, it's like, look, Disney fandom and Marvel fandom and Star Wars fandom, it's all kind of crossed over. Uh -huh. It's all crossed over into uh, many shades of crazy. Yes. You know, I mean, it really has. But they said, yeah, there are people defending it, blindly defending the MCU at every turn. But they've been. And the media has been the ones behind that most of the time. Like when they were trying to make people be, like if you liked Alita, then they were trying to pit Alita people against Captain Marvel people. The media was the one who did that. Yeah. Like it was a win for women that there were two strong female characters. Alita was definitely a better movie than Captain Marvel. And they tried to make it a contest. And it was the media who led that. They said the blind faith and the refusal to listen to other points of view make the shortcomings look even worse. There are plenty of reasons why it should be okay to criticize the MCU, especially when some of their older projects are taken into account. Wow. I'm ready to, wow. like, to like turn tables at this point. Marvel like, got toss with, chairs. Yeah, I know, right? Marvel got away with some bad movies before Phase 4. We don't talk about those very often. But now it's like every, every damn movie is middling. Eternals bad reviews were a turning point for the MCU. Oh, you mean, weren't these media outlets like going around saying that people were review bombing these movies and yeah. stuff? But now, now it's it's completely acceptable. Oh yeah, it's totally, totally acceptable now. Well, thank God we have their permission. They keep talking about the uh, critical reception of the Eternals being incredibly bad, uh, excluding Spider-Man No Way Home. That started a trend for the rest of Phase 4. Doctor so wait, Strange is bad. this because the critical scores have been low? Now it's acceptable because the critics don't like it. I, I think I think that's part of it. I'm like, I think the money ran out. I think Disney was actually paying off a lot of these. We don't know outlets, that. But, um, well, with perks and access I, and, yeah. you know. But, I mean, look. It's obvious that Phase 4 is not uh, anywhere near as beloved as Phases uh, 1 through 3. We've gotten rid of all the major characters everybody cared about. The Avengers. 
We have a bunch of D, I mean, God, the Avengers were kind of like B and C list characters. Now we have a bunch of freaking D, E, F tier Marvel characters. Everybody's been killed or replaced. It's like as soon as you have any character on a show and you get a, you get a show and you get a movie and you get a franchise and you get this, you know, and you get a comic book. Yeah, I just think it's hilarious that the media, all within the last week or so, and because of Thor, I think because of Thor, that they're turning on the MCU Phase 4. It's not hilarious, though, for those of us who have had to deal with a bunch of freaking crazies. Oh, yeah, when they have to deal with the crazies, then well, we're going to call it the crazies for being ridiculous. Yeah. But it was okay when they were telling us we were crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Screw you. So I think... Um, Screw it. <laughs> I think we are we are going to see some some changes here. Uh, I think eventually the box office is going to start falling off for Phase Four because uh, you know you can only have so many subpar movies before people realize like oh yeah the MCU is nowhere near what it was. Plus they keep replacing everyone. I think people are just sick of it. Yeah, they're tired of it. They're yeah. tired of it. So anyway, we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Now he's just tasty, delicious, rotten flesh meat, which I can consume and don't read into it too much. Just like our museum, the cafe, it's open to brute through it, eager to serve. I don't think this was in the show. No, run, 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 run. Oh, you got splatted. No. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh she was begging and what? you kicked her in the face. I don't care. Hey, guys, Squid King here, and today we're in a... <laughs> Not girl boss, not girl boss at all. She is not a material girl. She is not. Oh, it's Christmas time here in your mom. Nobody wants to join your mom. What? Like I can't even cook kid cuisine right. I would last about two minutes with Gordon Ramsay. What? Where is he? He's hiding. He's hiding from you. He better. Oh my God, you got the ax. Walker, does this look like Steven Universe? Let me punch him. Well, I'm just here for the wax. Get in the dirt. Well, that was a combination of events I probably shouldn't have put together. Anyways, let's open this bottle to Chica Pinata. Is that official? Oh, no. There's a bootleg. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey guys, it's Diamond Tool. Let's make a farm. Like and subscribe and buy my merch. I mean, while you're here, you guys should like really like and subscribe and buy our merch, all of which we have. <laughs> that is true. Can't run him carrying trash. And you can get away with one F bomb per PG 13 movie. Oh, I wish I'd yeah. known that sooner. Yeah. All right, so we're going to wrap this F up. Yes. <laughs>